Thank you for joining us for another episode of Exposing Scientology, where we reveal what really goes on inside this business masquerading as a church. Lily, we're back. Hi, Mikey. Hi, beautiful. It is so nice to see you. You too. Happy after Thanksgiving, although we happy did <laughs> Yeah, happy after Thanksgiving. How was yes. your Thanksgiving? You know, Mike, it's a lot, but it's so amazing, especially when you are coming out of something, even though we're not just coming out of right. Scientology. I think it's... I. And maybe it's also age. I think it's also age um, where I just stop and I try to look around and see the love in my life, the family in my life, the friends that we call family. And, you know, or, although I was obsessing, I did post this. Um, everybody saw the um, my sweet potato. I mean, <laughs> Mike. I have never, because I don't like sweet potato with the marshmallows, but I know everybody likes it. And I love tradition because we didn't have it, right? So right. everything's about tradition and and making new traditions. Like we, uh, this year, we I had everybody decorate the Christmas tree because I realized like, my sister Nicole and my brother-in-law Mike are not always with us. And my niece Brianna and her boyfriend, like we're not always together on Christmas. Right. I thought, let me get the tree going, you know? So we got the tree going, uh, the the sweet potato, just because I know everybody's kind of hanging on to what happened. And I know everybody's <laughs> very nervous to hear what happened with the sweet potato marshmallow casserole. Uh, my brother-in-law, whom I love very much, and without him, Thanksgiving wouldn't have been this year, okay, as successful. Um, he put it into the oven, you know, because you're supposed to put the marshmallows in at the end. Yeah. And burnt it. <laughs> uh, well, you know, us mics, uh, yes. not necessarily all good cooks. <laughs> <laughs> but I know how yours was because we talk. I don't right. think that we only talk when we're here. Right. You know what like get on like podcasts and, like we're best friends and we're the how old's your kid now you're like you ain't best friends <laughs> if you're... anyway yes yes well we had a wonderful time with I Alfred. Know. you know it's great because today we sort of we plan to take a break so we've yeah. taken our break but now we're back and we have for the first time someone right. else joining us on our new series and I, I want to. It was our first official guest. Yes, I love yes, it. Our, our first official guest, and I would like to welcome him. Yes. Uh, he has become quite well known in the last couple of months, uh, yeah. even though he's been doing some work for some time before that. Alex Barnes Russ. Hey, Alex. Hey, Hi, Alex. how's it going? Welcome. Oh. Thank you so much for having me, and what an honor to be your first guest on the new series. <laughs> right? Well, it's wonderful to have you, and Leah and I were talking earlier about, you know, the admiration we have for the work that you've been doing. Um, you are, uh, have become, uh, at, in the UK, you're like a force of nature exposing Scientology. You're like the... the uh, the king of Scientology exposers now in the UK. And that's wonderful. It's wonderful to have someone like you there who's doing the work right there on the ground in London and in East Grinstead. I mean, you were up in Sunderland and you've been all over the place. Yeah, I think for me, you know, I have my own personal story with Scientology, which is, you know, why I relate to it and why I want to fight and all of this. But for me, just the more stories that i hear of what scientology actually does to people um and the fact that it happens around the world it's not just you know this thing that's happening in la or in florida this is it happens at every level of every city in which scientology operates it just empowers me even more to like stand up and say you know i if I've got the opportunity to do something and raise awareness and give people a voice whose voice has been taken away by this thing, 
then you know it's an it's a given i have to do it and it's it feels like an obligation that you know someone needs to stand up for what's right and there's no one really doing it in the uk at the moment so it's me i guess <laughs> and and uh thank you like mike said it's so important that anybody and everybody who can speak can stand up do um it does not come without repercussions i'm sure scientology is hard at work uh trying to silence you uh and silencing those who you would give a platform to and have given a platform to so it's not uh hey let me just jump in the ring when somebody decides to speak out against scientology whether they were former scientologists or not they do so at great risk which is why um, lawsuits against this activity um, is important. So, and so anyway, thank you um, and welcome. Thank you. And thank you for all your support as well. You know, it's been, it's been, there's been such an outpouring of love and support from so many people in this community. And, you know, Leah, you messaged me to say thank you and, you know, you support like this is what, and, and Mike is on the phone to me so often, you know, offering tips or advice and answering my questions. Like this is the stuff people don't see is that we're actually a really tight knit community of trauma survivors that want right. to help each other. And right. that's what makes us stronger is when we're united. So, you know, it's a team effort. We're all here for each other. And, yeah, thank you. <laughs> well, I oh, oh. That, that was very, very <laughs> kind of you, Alex. I know. I just um, love. It. I love it all. <laughs> yeah, you'll be back. <laughs> uh, the, the reason that I I really felt particularly strongly about this being the first show back is because of what you have been exposing with respect to the efforts to safe point uh, the mayor and other people in East Grinstead. And Leah and I have talked about this many, many times about, you know, the LAPD and this and that. And it's something that I don't think can be said often enough to warn those who may be sucked into the Scientology vortex with their front groups or their checks to become um, enablers of Scientology and protectors of the abuses that are ongoing. I, I And that's I'm not saying that just as sort of to sound dramatic. You did a, a video today, Alex, where you interviewed a number of people, uh, including children who had been at St. Hill and abused at St. Hill. And when you have the mayor making statements supportive of Scientology, uh, because he just received a 50,000 pound check, which you exposed on your wonderful site. It well, I, want, I think we should just let Alex tell a little bit about this before we move on, because um, for those who haven't seen the video or don't have time to see the video, like I want us to know what the story is, Alex. So okay, yeah. let me just show you this. Okay. This this is from Alex's site called Scientology Business. Is it ScientologyBusiness.org.uk? Dot com, dot com. Okay, ScientologyBusiness.com.uk? Just dot com. Just com. Just okay, don't. East Grinstead Mayor defends Scientology after accepting 50,000 pound charity check. And here you can see him on stage at the St. Hill Gala and charity concert accepting the 50,000 pound check. Uh, this woman in the blue on all the way on the left is the local PR who has been there forever, Liz us Liz Osterman, Osterman. <laughs> yeah um and I just wanted everybody to see that that was there and where to go find it if they want to read the full article but perhaps then Alex you can I know that you have talked about this before but the more times you talk about and explain the outrageousness of what's going on the better yeah absolutely and thank you for the opportunity I think the, the interesting thing about this is we all know Scientology's tricks and its attempts to infiltrate and gain religious recognition in any way that it can. Like we know it's that that's what they do. 
but for me seeing it actually at like seeing them at work and actually doing it currently um was a real eye opener for me and the more i started looking into it and the more i wrote about it and the more i get get comments and emails the more layers there are to this onion i suppose um and the deeper it goes you know so i um, was aware that the mayor was going to go to the St. Hill, the charity concert at the IS event. Um, and one of the chosen charities to receive uh, a donation was uh, the mayor's charity. He gets to choose a charity every year. There's a local cause that he can raise money for. He chose Queen Victoria Hospital, which uh, in 2017 were in the national press over here because they got a £50,000 donation from Scientology. And local MPs and ethical standards and so on uh, were outraged and said it's not acceptable for a healthcare trust to accept money from Scientology. And they were massively under fire for it. And here we are six years later. The same organization then taking another £50,000 donation through the mayor. What's even more is the mayor actually holds a paid position working for this hospital. <laughs> in, in Aside from his role as mayor, he, he works for this hospital. <laughs> that's, his, that's his employer. And yeah. so he's chosen the hospital to be the benefactor of all donations to the mayor's charity this year. It's just there's question marks all over this thing. And, yes. and and so what was the result, if any yet, of your exposing what's happening there? Because there's so many levels of, of unethical standards that are being crossed here. Has, any, has anybody other than you and people who are exposing Scientology saying anything, doing anything yeah. about it? Yeah, so I uh, I wrote to the mayor and the council for a statement for this article. And I said, look, can you please give me a statement on why the mayor has chosen uh, to attend this event and why he thinks it's acceptable? They gave me a statement basically saying that the mayor represents, uh, you know, all people that live in East Grinstead equally. He doesn't make judgments on religion. They are a legal religious, like they're a legally recognized religion. And as such, we treat them as so. And so I promptly responded and said, are you sure that's the statement you want to go with? Because that's not true. I will happily publish a false statement if you want me to, and I will call you out for it. But I want to be, you know, <laughs> benefit of the doubt, give you the opportunity to alter that because Scientology does not have a uh, charity status here in the UK because it was rejected by the Charity Commission in 1999. Because in order to be recognized as a, a religion here, there are lots of different sort of small decisions that make up religious recognition but the main one is the charity tax exemption you have to prove you have a public benefit you're actually helping people uh, and they couldn't do that in 1999 they were rejected and it was ruled that they don't benefit the public um they so, do that today either so or say again, sorry. yeah oh but yeah exactly and they couldn't prove that they're uh, a benefit to the public today or ever right <laughs> I, I wish this test, I've said it many times, Leah, I wish I this test existed in the United States. I know. I was yeah. in the UK trying yeah. to persuade the Charity Commission, along with David Miscavige and Tom Cruise, mm -hmm. trying to persuade the Charity Commission that uh, Scientology performed a public benefit. And it was a all-out, no-holds-barred effort to do everything possible bring them to St. Hill, wine and dine them, send Tom Cruise, fly Tom Cruise over there to meet with, with officials from Tony Blair's government to try and put pressure on the Charity Commission. It was a full court press, and it did not succeed, despite the fact, you know, Scientology shows always, oh, well, we have all these... Uh, these programs to benefit society, we do knocking on, we have uh, drug-free yeah. world, we have Human all of these things. Yeah, world literacy crusade. Yeah. We pulled out every single one of them, every single thing, The uh, made new videos, made presentation books, made all of this stuff to try and persuade the representatives of the Charity Commission and just were unable to do so because there's no substance. 
I was going <laughs> to ask you that, Mike. On the way over on Tom's plane, were you and David Miscavige or whoever else really? How, how does that conversation happen, right? Like Alex, like like if we were in Scientology, right, and we were like having a meeting, all of us. All right, so we gotta we gotta persuade these people, right? So, what what do you got? Anybody? Yeah. What what are you bringing? Like, what are we br like, Mike? What did you bring to them that was actually factual? Did you bring anything that was factual? Because probably not. I'm assuming. Well, absolutely not, Leah. It is all. But each front. other, we're like, fuck, we really don't have shit. I mean, <laughs> no, but but that's never the mindset. The mindset is always like, we are going to dominate this. We are going to control these people. We are going to put them in a position where they will feel stupid if they if they question or deny right. what we are presenting. And we will present to them a lot of puffery and a lot of fluffery. And it works on a lot of people. Clearly. Like this yeah. is the this is really what's so so frustrating about it right. is how many people fall for this stuff. Right. What so was, right. I know. I'm I was, sorry. I was gonna say what's sort of interesting about the charity commissioners is that this is what they do for a living. Right. They right. are they are scrutinizing the activities of charitable organizations to make sure that they actually do provide a public benefit. Right. And while a lot of people just get steamrolled with the PR crap, these guys just didn't. They're like, so how many people did you actually get off drugs in the United Kingdom last year? In the United Kingdom. And can we interview them? <laughs> and how many uh, programs did you do uh, to help the indigent in some fashion? And where is the evidence of that? Right. And this is what Scientology can never come up with because it doesn't exist. They're all photo ops. They're all video ops. I don't. I can't even remember. I think that there was one Narcanon in. Hove or Brighton or somewhere that was the only knocking on in the United Kingdom. That was right. it. Right. And so, oh, it got quickly, uh, you know, painted and renovated and some people piled in there to make it look like there were actual people there. And that was it. That's, that's the extent of it. And, you know, it, so was, it was staged though. It was not people were told to get there to do this photo op. I just want to be clear that it wasn't like a bunch of people were there. It was staged. No, appear no they had, they have to be brought in to make it look like there is sure. a, a real, a real thing happening. There may sure. have been one person or two people yeah. that were on the knock on program at the time. Sure. But you know, what happens is you walk, we walk in with the big video presentations, knocking on Shalako and, you know, you see all these people, all all stage two at Nakanon on Shilako, or other Nakanons around the world that do exist. Mm -hmm. uh, the photo shoot crews are sent out from gold to create these videos, and they create the videos, and they come back, and they edit them together into a whole string, and it looks like, oh, my God there's knock-ons everywhere and there's tons of people and they're all in the sauna and they're all holding up their success story, you know, the certificates and blah, blah, blah. And then the, the you take that and people watch it and they go, Oh, that's pretty impressive. And yeah. then as soon as you ask the question, okay, so how many graduates have there been in the United Kingdom last year? It's like, um, and can we have their names? Right. Uh, 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 it's it right. all falls to pieces, and that's what's so frustrating. With I mean, I know we have talked about this a lot, Leah, about these front groups and how it's just 
photo ops and ha how frustrating it is that people don't see through the, the garbage. But and also when they do see it, they don't want to see it because they're benefiting from it. So right. Alex, what happened when you confronted him with his bullshit? So the same when they came back was really defensive of Scientology. And uh, <laughs> I just pointed out, so just a little bit of background. They didn't yeah. get the religious charity status here in 99 but they did have two other victories in the last 20 years that have been beneficial towards them so while i was on staff at london org uh, they won a court case in the supreme court that allowed them to perform religious wedding ceremonies at london org which is some sort of religious recognition because your buildings are then designated places of worship now, that just means you can do weddings and, you know, funerals and this sort of thing. And right. it's only applicable to the actual rooms that are uh, used for the religious service. So the chapel, which is one room in the 50,000 square foot building, is a place of worship legally. And then 10 years later, January of this year, 2023, they won another victory, which is a which was a tax uh, tax case where the properties were designated places of public worship, which means they're exempt from pay paying a certain type of local business property tax. Yeah. Again, it only applies to certain rooms in the building. Uh, oh. It's not the whole thing. It's not rooms that are used for office space and so on. So some of their church buildings are considered places of public worship. But mm. that's it. There's been no ruling on their you know, belief system or anything like this. They don't have charity status. Yeah. And that's really important to kind of differentiate between the two. So I came back to the mayor's office with this and said, you know, they're not a legal religion. You know, their buildings, you know, for tax purposes are considered places of worship in part, but mm -hmm. they don't benefit the public. The UK government said it. Um, and it's kind of concerning that you coming back with this statement suggests that the councillors and the mayor are listening to what Scientology are telling him about, you know, Scientology status, it's a religion and so on. Uh, and just taking that as a fact rather than doing his own research, looking at the actual evidence in British law that tells you exactly what Scientology is here. So that's concerning and it indicates an influence here, which is, you know, not a great thing. So they amended their statement and came back to me and, and, and changed it and just referred to it as an organization. Um, but I published it and had an instant outpouring of messages from all over the country people outraged at how the mayor who is supposed to be representative of the population of east grinstead is spending so much time at scientology events now scientology it, according to the 2021 census it's i think it's like 0.18 percent of the local population in and around East Grinstead consider themselves Scientologists. Well, so, and so those of us who are not good at math, what does that, give me a number, what would that mean? <laughs> it was like, I, I don't have those in front of me, but it's something like 700 people out, out of a population of like 150,000 or something for like East Grinstead and the surrounding areas. It's a tiny, tiny portion of, of the population. And it is, it is equates, Leah, to 18 out of 10,000. <laughs> That makes sense why the mayor is dedicating so much time to Scientology. But go After ahead. saying that they were a valued and large part of the East Grinstead community, which was how he justified it at the outset. Hey, East Grinstead, why don't you all write the mayor and tell them how Scientology has benefited you? Those of you who are not the 700 Scientologists, everybody else, why don't you write your mayor and say how Scientology has benefited your communities? Yeah, I mean, yeah. if you look at it, the, the, the more I delved into it, the more I realized. So the mayor went to the St. Hill charity concert and took this check for £50,000 for his charity. But he also then, this weekend just gone, went to St. Hill to do the official Christmas light switch on at St. Hill, you know, as the mayor. And then several months ago, uh, he put a post on the mayor's official blog with a picture of him with Tom Cruise saying, it was lovely to go to the premiere of Mission Impossible with a number of previous mayors. What an honor. It was great to meet Tom. He's wonderful. So that's three days of that we know about he has spent publicly engaging and supporting scientology um for like 700 people <laughs> like he's not splitting his time fairly according to the actual population and that's what the problem is irrespective of you know whether you want to make a judgment on scientology's practices 
you're not being fair with your time according to your actual population and calling Scientology a large and valued part of the community is just nonsense because they're not a large part of the community, but they do have a lot of money and they do spend a lot of time lobbying the politicians in the local government. So they seem it seems like they have a lot of influence and they are a large group of people. But in reality, they're not. Right. And that's always been the intention of Scientology, because even here in L.A., you hear people go, oh, my God, there's so many actors. And so I go, is there? Do you know how many <laughs> actors are in Screen Actors Guild? And I could maybe count on one hand the amount of actually working Scientologists. Like, it, it wouldn't even register on a scale of any sort. I mean, even on the smallest scale in comparison to how many people are in the actual acting unions. You know, but it 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 works very hard at, and purposely, right, as, as directed by their policies, uh, to appear as though they are, like you said, uh, a place of worship. And I wanted to ask you one question before we move forward, Alex. When at your time as uh, of your time of being a Scientologist and your time of being on staff at a, at a local uh, uh, Scientology organization, um, how much worshipping of any God did you ever do as a Scientologist? <laughs> so, fair there was, question. Fair there question. was a lot of. Yeah. I mean, essentially okay, none. Stop laughing. Everybody stop laughing. There was a lot of pressure from OSA, from the DSA, right, Director of Special Affairs. And he was like, you need to go to Sunday service if you possibly can, because it's really important for our religious recognition. That is what the um, the status as place of worship was really um, leaning on, was the fact that anybody can go to a Sunday service and engage in a form of public worship in a public setting. No, um, no, but, but so Alex, what... what but I never went to one. Of course, <laughs> never no, no, happened. No, 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 but Alex, if you were to show up to a Scientology Sunday, sir, if I walked into any organization of Scientology anywhere around the world on Sunday, would I find a religious service going on of Scientology? Well, this is the thing, you know, if you consider group auditing a religious ceremony, then, you know, whatever. But I don't believe standing there saying, look at that wall, you know, sit down, stand up. That's not worship, <laughs> you know, in that any you way. Sit down, stand up. That's what they did. That was the preacher. What, what would you call a, a Scientology minister is standing up with a cross saying, stand up. Thank you. Sit down. Thank you. Stand up. Thank you. Sit down. Thank you. This is the Look command. at that wall. Right. Look right. at your feet. Yep. Yeah, that's that is what the is person next to you. So just right. so everybody knows, just so your mayor knows, this is the extent of Scientology's religious service, Sunday service, and the purpose of this. What what do you want to call it, Mike? Uh, what is it called? Uh, group processing is yes. to get people into present time. Correct. That's exactly right. That is what the stated purpose by L. Ron Hubbard is, is if you look around in your environment and touch things in your environment, it will bring you into the here and now. And that's <laughs> has nothing to do with God, the spirit, anything. I know. <laughs> and then, and then the, the other part of the uh, quote Sunday service mm -hmm. is to listen to a lecture by L. Ron Hubbard, which Talk is... Talking in about fact, <laughs> which is in fact in Scientology, the closest thing there is to God. Mm -hmm. is that right and I'm not being funny about that. Well, in, that. In the minds of Scientologists, mm -hmm. the words of L. Ron Hubbard are gospel truth, uh, infallible, and must be listened to. And this is part of the received wisdom of the religion of Scientology is hearing the words spoken at you by L. Ron Hubbard. And mm -hmm. that's it. That's that's kind of all there is. There right. isn't anything else. There is then practicing those things, but it is all taking in the words of L. Ron Hubbard, accepting them, duplicating them, and then applying them to your life. That is what Scientology is in a nutshell. 
Now, Alex, what do you know about safe pointing? So this is what's so fascinating is it's so clearly happening here in East Grinstead with the mayor, you know, safe pointing the whole idea. And Mike, you're the expert on this because you used to work in the office of special affairs. So correct me if I'm wrong in my interpretation. But my understanding is that Scientology want to influence and bring under control local politicians, officials, decision makers, anybody that can have an impact on Scientology's um, activities in any way. They right. want to bring them under their control. So they will do anything and everything they can to make good connections with all the important people so that ultimately they turn a blind eye when you know, they're called into to criticism or something happens that they could do with these good relationships. You know, it helps them speed up planning applications and means that when someone stands up and goes, hey, I was locked in a room and told I couldn't leave or, you know, I've been disconnected from my family or, you know, they financially destroyed uh, my elderly mother or whatever it is because they have spent years flattering all of these important people saying look these you know this is what we're doing you know we we brought tom cruise to meet you we offered to pay for this and do this we couldn't possibly do these horrible things these nutcases are, are um you know accusing us of that's the purpose of safe pointing and it's a very long process that they have been doing since elron hubbard set up shop in East Grinstead when he bought St. Hill Manor in 1959. This is not something new. It has been ongoing for decades. And what we're seeing now is very much the result of that with the mayor going to several Scientology events in the year and publicly defending Scientology on Twitter. You know, when someone called him out on why he's going to all of these lavish events, he said, well, you know, Scientology is a legal religion. I respect all religions. And that's what prompted me to to ask for an official statement. It's like, well, they're, they're simply not, <laughs> you know, right. and how regardless of their religious status, if even if they did have that, does that justify or make it OK that they are abusing people left, right and centre, destroying lives, tearing families apart? That is something that no organization should do, whether or not they're considered religious. And by standing alongside that group, publicly defending them, I don't think that's OK, irrespective of the religion question. And that's my problem is Scientology is doing this stuff and has been doing it for years and is being endorsed by local officials. It's it's outrageous and quite frankly, disgusting. And and I think you've made an amazing, uh, uh, very very uh, apt point about this, Alex, when you said, look, the we all know from reading and understanding the policy letters that were written by L. Ron Hubbard, which I've got all of these and I will have them on my blog and I'm going to read a couple of little quotes here, but that the intent and purpose of handing over a 50,000 pound check is not to help anybody with that 50,000 pounds, but to come up with a check that they think is big enough that will cause the influence mm -hmm. of the person they are handling the check to. These activities that they are engaged in of, quote, safe pointing, the Hubbard term for creating these friends and allies in the community, are not done in order to assist those people in doing their job better, to assist those people in whatever activities they may be engaged in. It is the intent and purpose of it is to get those people to stand up and become protectors of Scientology. And, and you've, yeah. s you've seen it now, Alex. You're calling it out. This guy is saying... Well, they're a religion, and that this for Scientology is like this is music to their ears. Yeah, this is what they want. They want people going around calling them a religion, saying that they're doing this wonderful work because they will use that with the next people they go to. You know, they take the statements of this mayor over here and go to the next city and use the statement from that mayor to the next guy, and this is all pursuant to this 
policy letter written by L. Ron Hubbard called The Safe Point. And I'm just going to read a bit. Like, I have these, but they've, I was looking at them, and they're hard to read. So, look, this just proves that there is such a policy letter. <laughs> uh -huh. And I'm going to read out this, this bit here. The most important action to undertake when going about making a safe point is to carefully and painstakingly find out who exactly are the top dogs in the area in financial and political circles and their associates and connections and to what each one is hostile. A handful of allies with impressive sounding titles and positions is not enough. Viability depends on having all areas and persons who could affect or influence the operation under PR control. Most important are the groups who survey out to be the key real powers in any area. These persons may or may not be those who occupy high political or social positions. They may or may not be the titular heads of large economic concerns. Research and survey alone can determine this. And this is the, the Bible of the public relations department of every Scientology organization on earth. And they have another policy letter called The Public Image, also uh, written by Mr. Hubbard, which says he also gets the support from allied organizations like churches. And you have to go civic, go outside Scientology, get support, organize committees, blood out campaigns. But you don't announce this policy. You can and must ally with real humanitarian and civil rights groups. <laughs> that always gets me. That always gets me. <laughs> I know. Ron Hubbard knew, like, we're not really doing this shit. So you got to ally yourself with some real people. The real guys. <laughs> the real organizations. The real charitable organizations that are doing the work. Get connect right. with those people. Go ahead. Sorry. Right. Scientology speakers must address groups and say the story which is to appear, not just talk about Scientology. I mean, this stuff is so um, transparently fraudulent. Yes. When you read the policy letters that Hubbard wrote about what everybody's supposed to be doing. I mean, it even gets worse when you go back to the the Department of Official Affairs policy letter, which has sort of established this whole uh, organizational uh, department to do this stuff way back in 1961. And he says, heavily influenced through our own and similarly minded groups on the public and official mind, a pro-Scientology government of the area is an objective and the actions of making better press consist of making friends with the publisher who commands reporters and does not really consist of handling reporters. The action of influencing groups consisting of making consists of making a favorable impression on the head of ally groups. The action of bringing about the failure of a hostile group is accomplished by finding and releasing the truth about the leader of that group. The action of bringing about pro-Scientology government consists of making a friend of the most highly placed government person one can reach, even placing Scientologists in domestic and clerical posts close to him and seeing to it that Scientology resolves his troubles and case. And then finally, the ultimate objective is described in the policy called the Department of Government Affairs. And this says that the goal of the department is to bring the government and hostile philosophies or societies into a state of complete compliance with the goals of Scientology. This is done by high-level ability to control and in its absence, by low-level ability to overwhelm, introvert such agencies, 
control such agencies. Scientology is the only game on earth where everybody wins. There is no overt in bringing good order. This, this is really what Scientology is engaged in. Mm -hmm. It is not the altruistic um, humanitarian objectives of helping the people in society or it is all with the end of Scientology gaining footholds and controlling people. Like it says it right there. <laughs> control these people. Control these governments. Bring them in full compliance with Scientology. All these little bits that you're seeing, the little bites that they take, they're all to try and get to the point of devouring the whole thing. Right. It's not a joke. It's not a... Um, a uh, oh yeah, well you're just making up that you're like trying to paint this picture of this grandiose scheme. No, this is their plan. This is what they are trying to accomplish. By the way, this is what we were all trying to accomplish. It's not yes. a secret as Scientologists, Alex and Mike. I mean, we as Scientologists are trained at a very early age. No matter when you get into Scientology, but the very no matter what age you get into Scientology, you read. Keeping Scientology working, a staple policy that basically says every man, woman, and child's life depends on what we do here and now in Scientology. We are not playing some major game in Scientology. Like, you know, it 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 sets up that the the mankind cannot exist, right? It's an extremist uh, proposition. It's not some people believe this, some people don't. You're let you're not allowed to believe anything other than what the words of Elvon Hubbard state, and Everything we do is a lie, meaning um, a Scientologist, right? We're, we need to appear as though we're perfectly happy and well-adjusted human uh, beings when we're uh, on our way to being um, psychotic, uh, especially when you get up to your OT levels, your confidential levels of Scientology, you're speaking to beings that don't exist for 10 years. Um, you know, so, and you create an alternative person to yourself, one who is uh, lying 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. As a matter of fact, in these public relation policies, Alvon Hubbard says, don't tell them, meaning the world, what we truly believe. <laughs> um, just go like big, broad things like religious freedom for all, human rights, nobody should be on drugs, everybody should be happy. These you know, secular concepts, right? Which is how they get away with the hate, the way to happiness booklet, right? It's, you can't disagree with, you know, don't be promiscuous, you know, like, you know, general concepts like that, right? Like don't right. do drugs, right? And so it's what you guys are saying. It's purposeful. So when you see them handing out these booklets and getting mayors and city officials, and the sheriff's department of LA and the LAPD and Clearwater PD and uh, you know city officials, city council men and women, you know all these people that are showing up to Scientology events under the guise of they're in my district or they're of religion too should know you're being played. And don't take our word for it. You can read. Go to Mike's blog, read Alex's story, go to all, every science, ex, uh, Scientologist, whistleblower, their websites, and it's all there. Everything L. Ron Hubbard has ever written is available to you. It's available to government agencies. Um, if I was a government agency, Mike, or uh, Alex, and I read these policies of infiltration of government agencies and the activities of Scientology that they have done. They've gone to prison for it. They continue to try to attempt it. If this was in writing by a foreign government about American government or even, you know, England, whatever, it doesn't matter. Any democracy, I should say, right? Yeah. Um, these people would be considered on a different list. They yeah, they'd be considered terrorists. terrorists. And 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 get and we're not exaggerating. This is not um, to be uh, you know 
uh, to be making headlines, right? We're not trying to make headlines here today or ever. <clears throat> we are trying to educate the public of what you are doing. Now, I almost forgive these assholes that you're talking about, Alex, um, because he made himself look good by getting a check um, from Scientology, which, by the way, any money that Scientology has to give to any real charity, I'm like, ha ha on you, fuckers. You lost that little amount of money, you know, to yeah. so something real, right? To so something real. Um, but it, the fact that city officials and government officials are, um, uh, police officers, police departments are so easily bought off by Tom Cruise is so embarrassing. It, they should be embarrassed of themselves and those who vote for them should know that it is that bottom level disgusting that they get to meet Tom Cruise or they get their wife to meet Tom Cruise and they get laid for the first time in 10 years for doing so. Like these are the kind of people, just because they're a city official or a representative of the law or government, do not underestimate the power of celebrity. And David Miscavige knows this, which is why he keeps his boy Tom happy and yep. does anything and everything he can do to service him. Yep. That's exactly what's happening. I mean, it happened, Mike, when you and I met with the the River uh, the Riverside County Sheriff's Office. Um, yep. Not the new, I'm not going to say the new, uh, not the Hemet people that you and I met, um, but the, the the department that we met, um, Claire and I, Claire Headley, right. uh, different different type of mentality. They actually are um, abiding by uh, the badge that they uh, that oh, they yeah. wear. Yes, uh, very different from Chief Moore of the LAPD, who is very similar to your guy. You know, impressed with Scientology and Scientology shit celebrities, and um, it's sad. It's sad. Yeah, I Sorry. think we should let you speak. <laughs> no, it's good. It, you know, I haven't disagreed with a single thing either of you have said. I think for me, the two key words that mean so much to me is accountability and integrity right yeah. yes this guy has done something because he thinks it makes him look good hey look at me giving a check to the charity and i'm a great mayor and all of this but um the whole point here is their actions have consequences right and yes that might have made you, made you feel good for a day and you might have been able to get a picture with tom cruise and have a really nice meal at some fancy you know five star michelin like level do yeah. um but ultimately, doing so is sending a public signal that you are siding with and supporting yeah. an organization yeah. whose leader, David Miscavige, is a named defendant in several lawsuits that allege human trafficking, child labor, you know, harassment, intimidation. Right. And there are many more exactly stories like Danny Masterson and there's rape and abuse and forced abortions and financial extortion. And, you know, these people take advantage of the elderly of the vulnerable and they hurt people. It's a damaging extremist belief system. And so by supporting that, uh, <laughs> by going to their event and giving a check to a local charity oh. is that really the image that you want to portray of your local government office you know what does that say about integrity and fine some people make mistakes whatever excuse he might have for it that doesn't mean he shouldn't be held accountable for making those decisions and that's my point with doing this is saying look he can do what he wants, you know, people can believe in what they want, but that doesn't mean people should be able to get away with supporting abuse, right? I just won't stand for it. And I'm not going to stop until, you know, that's everybody in the country knows about it. Awesome. Yeah. And also the fact of, of victims, right? I know that we have a problem. I know that I have a problem personally with um, not feeling confident to call the LAPD should I need um, their assistance um, and and victims of Scientology 
do not feel confident to go to law enforcement when law enforcement is taking pictures and showing up to Scientology events, uh, similar to what you're talking about. Uh, these people are amazing. They're doing amazing things for the community. And, you know, your uh, constituents or your citizens um, are sitting back going, well, I was a crime had been committed against me when I was a child or recently or destroyed my life, destroyed my uh, mother's life or sister's life. And um, I guess I can't go to that office. Um, and if I try to go above that person, that's the mayor who's uh, fully safe pointed by Scientology. And so it dissuades people from seeking justice for themselves um, and, and victims of this organization. And that's the damage, uh, uh, the damage that that does, Alex, is so far reaching, right? Because it's not just in your town, it's not just in this community, right? Like Mike said, they take that, they go to the next town, they go to the next mayor, they go to the next governor, the whatever, and they gain momentum because the other people are shamed by well, if this guy did it, then why am I not doing it? If this woman did it, why am I not doing it, right? Like, I have my personal feelings, but should that be enough? No, it's not about personal feelings. Right. It's about looking at the history of this organization and their own writings and teachings and the, the thousands and thousands who have been hurt and are going to continue to be hurt by a criminal organization. And this is why it's important as well. And like, especially now is especially, you know, in East Grinstead in Sussex, you know, Scientology have had a base there since the sixties, right? They have been spending decades uh, building this network of support for them. Yeah. It's not something that's new. It's not something that they've just arrived in town and they've done a few things about <clears throat> people know right. they've been doing this for a very long time so what do you think the effect is on that network now they've been there for a you know a chunk of time they've established themselves in the town that there is a really good um indication that they are already getting away with more than any other organization of a similar st status should be uh, allowed to get get gotten away with like the whole point is that the support network is geared towards supporting Scientology, not the victims of abuse, the victims of harassment, the victims of rape and of all the other horrible things that Scientology does to every single one of its members. The support network that exists should be for them, right? Should be for justice, should be for helping people who have gone through trauma and who need mental health support or whatever else they need to get over this and, and say, look, this is what happened to me. I want justice. That's what the support network should be doing, not protecting Scientology when it's not even a registered tax-free, uh, tax-exempt religious organization. It's, it's absurd. And they've been working at this for so long. I'm fed up with it and I don't understand how they've been allowed to get away with it. And I'm like, look, what am I going to do? I'm going to tell stories. So I put this video together today where I, I just spoke to a bunch of people and I said, look, can you just submit a one or two minute short clip that tells a personal story of something that happened to you at St. Hill? Mm -hmm. And I think just putting them together in one place just shows, you know, I had people talking about being there in the 60s and the 70s, being on the ship with Owen Hubbard and then going to St. Hill right up to someone who was there only, a, you know, a year or two ago. And with my story as well in London, or like it just shows that people are being harmed and hurt by this organization and they've been doing it since they started for decades. So right. Enough is enough. Right. Yeah. And, and it wasn't. You're not saying, Alex, it's not a thing of the past, right? These mm -hmm. are the policies written by L. Ron Hubbard <laughs> that cannot be changed, will not be changed, which is why it will continue. It's not like, oh, well, every every new religion goes through some kind of persecution, you know, which is the line that we were all told to say, yeah. which the line, again, is not 
going to change because Scientology policy does not change, right? So, well, they're all, all celebrities will continue to say it. And uh, mayors and people who are benefiting from knowing Scientology and Scientologists are going to push the line that Scientology writes for them. And it's going to continue unless we do something about it, which is what we're all trying to do. <laughs> exactly. Yes. And, and just to sort of put a, a cherry on top of what Alex said, Mm -hmm. The mayor is walking into St. Hill to turn on the lights for Christmas, the Christmas lights, mm -hmm. for an organization that does not believe in Christ in any way, shape, or form. Mike, not only, he, wait, wait, wait. Not only does it not believe in Christ, it doesn't believe in any God. Right. Doesn't believe or any in religion, God, any religion at all. The only thing religious beliefs of others, even though they claim it. Go ahead, Mike. Sorry. It, the only thing that they believe in is Scientology and L. Ron Hubbard, and that is it. That mm -hmm. is, there is nothing else. Mm -hmm. But on top of that, he is standing within a few feet of victims of human trafficking mm -hmm. today, mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. There are victims of human trafficking in the C organization at every C organization location on earth. Mm -hmm. And the biggest one in the UK, or actually the only one in the UK, is on that property. St. Hill Manor property, that is where the C organization is. And mm -hmm. there are victims of human trafficking standing maybe shaking the hands of this guy patting him on the back mm -hmm. giving him serving him his tea whatever mm -hmm. this guy is walking into a compound which is full of victims of human trafficking and is going there to laud them and turn on their christmas lights and that's what's really really so wrong about this and Unfortunately, it's not just in East Grinstead. Like in the last two weeks, I've gotten things sent to me, which I'm going to show you that to show that this is this is policy of Scientology. So everywhere you go in Scientology, you're gonna see the same thing. Uh -huh. Check this out. This is the Los Angeles Assistant Fire Chief, Dean Zipperman, on L. Ron Hubbard Way for their Happy Holidays event from the Church of Scientology addressing the adoring crowd. Uh -huh. And here is Father Carlos Ruvalcaba of St. Stephen's Episcopal Church doing the same thing. And you can see the Sea Org member standing over there on the right, uh -huh. you know, like standing guard almost to uh -huh. make sure that this guy doesn't screw up somehow. Uh -huh. And then we see a press release sent out. Publisher of the works of L. Ron Hubbard gets a jump on the holiday season by sharing the not-so-secret secret of happiness. Uh -huh. This then goes on to say, and what better way to help Los Angeles youngsters and their families experience the joy of the season than by sharing the way to happiness at the East L.A. Sheriff's Department Halloween event. I, I mean, can tell you a better way to help Los Angeles youngsters and their families ex experience the joy of the season. And that is to show them love, support, compassion, spend time with your family, you know, give them gifts of appreciation. You know, that's the best way to show those things to youngsters in L.A. Not the bloody way to happiness. Like, it right. angers me. I mean and and the fact that the LA uh, sheriff's office uh, again you know they have for years been infiltrated uh, by Scientology and uh, the benefits that they receive not the community that the, the those officers receive are uh, off-duty jobs that pay a lot of money um, shaking the hands of um, I don't know, some celebrities I guess of Scientology Um uh, I've heard stories of people getting uh, their children or cousins or sister jobs uh, in the entertainment industry. 
Um, so, you know, the list goes on, right? So they benefit and it's not just showing up to your local chapter church um, as police departments should, um, because these churches, real churches actually reach out to their communities and feed the homeless and shelter the homeless. Scientology does not, nor does any uh, front group of Scientology do so on any scale that they should be doing like real churches do. So I can only say they receive uh, benefits that are not, uh, I would say, becoming of, a, of a, a man or woman who wears the badge and risks their lives every day uh, for their citizens. I don't think they realize uh, what they're doing because, listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this one last thing because I don't want to take up. I've been accused of speaking too much, um, which is probably very true. But I also, in Alex's defense, like some people, Mike, you know this, don't speak when we interview them. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. You're like, you can't shut me up sometimes. You're good. <laughs> okay. Um, what was the last thing I was going to say before I segued into my nonsense and bullshit? Um What was I saying? Something about the, the officers. Um, I don't think they realize the message that they send. Yes. The damage that they're doing because it did it to me when I was in. And when I was at the events and I saw walking across that stage, a man or woman in, you know, with a badge, I was like, you know, if they say Scientology is okay, then I guess I'm not being abused. Because if they're here validating this organization and, you know, I had a very kind of childlike approach, even though I was an adult, um, in thinking that those uh, people represented, what you know, complete goodness, complete honor, complete integrity. Um, and uh, years of doing this, I see that that's not so much the case. <laughs> but they should know the message that it sends to victims when they see you, someone of note who's not a Scientologist, uh, what it sent, what message that sends. It's very damaging. And I hope that those who, who see this or hear this um, un, uh, change their mind, yep. uh, their support of this organization. And another thing is, you know, Alex can't do this by himself. Um, we can't do this by ourselves. We need, we don't have $3 billion uh, at our fingertips. We don't have an organization of 40,000 people at best worldwide um, to do our dirty work. We don't have their confidential folders that we can use things that uh, are so personal to us, harmful to us, painful for us to use against us. We don't have that information against them. And if we did, I don't think we would use it because that would make us them. Right. Um, but we do need help. We do need help in law enforcement. We do need help on government level. We do need help from the IRS, the FBI, the DOJ. Um, we need people to support the victims, like Alex said, um, instead of treating us as attackers of Scientology, which is their words, which, you know, Chief Moore repeated here in L.A. Um, um, so we need we need your help. So we hope that you could step up, uh, support Alex um, and what he's doing and where he's doing it. Support the Aftermath Foundation, support all of those doing the work. Um, no matter what, we support each other. Uh, until then, we would love your help. And thank you, Alex, for joining the team. I know it's not easy. I don't know if there's anything else you want to add, Mike, or Alex? Um, no, that was a lovely wrap up, Leah. Okay. I think the final thing I just want to say is what you said just then about what message does it send mm -hmm. is so important with the case of the mayor, because if you look at who the mayor is, right, if you look at the documents, the mayor in East Grinstead, this is a quote, should be considered the foremost citizen of the town. They should be treated as a dignitary outranked only by the sovereign. 
right? So the King of England is the only person higher than this guy in terms of how you should think of this person. Revere him and revere you know, him. Yes. Yeah. So what message does it send when this guy is not looking at the evidence? You can turn on Twitter and just look on my account and see that I get dozens of messages a day from OSA bots calling me a religious bigot and I'm part of a hate group. And then you look at my tweets, which is saying, I just want to show compassion and let people know that if they want to leave or escape Scientology, there's a support network there to help them mm -hmm. and standing up for people who are saying, hey, something's not right here. Like, right. The evidence is clear to see, right? The lies on Scientology's website are so easily disproven if you just spend 10 minutes looking up the facts and reading the policy and reading the judgments. Right. What does it say about the integrity of public office when you have the foremost citizen of the town siding with this organization where there's so much evidence against it, right? Right. That's why it's important to take this seriously. We're not talking about here, you know, someone trotting around, cutting ribbons, taking money and, you know, whatever. It doesn't really affect anybody. No, this is supporting a hate group. <laughs> Scientology it's enabling. Enabling. These yeah. people are enablers. So they what, what can they do, Alex? What can people do about this particular problem? I think, you know, if you're not in East Grinstead, you know, well, firstly, if you think there's been a breach of the code of conduct, if you think that this guy's integrity is is in question and he's not being account, you know, he blocked me on Twitter. So he is running away from someone trying to hold him accountable, which well, I think is. Well, Alex, I have I have blocked people who said my my top lip, my top lip doesn't move only because it's annoying me. So I'm like, but, that, but that's not holding you accountable. That's bullying. Right. When I'm saying I'm trying to hold this guy <laughs> accountable for for what he's done right and and you shouldn't run away from that when you hold a position of public office so no i agree i'm i'm, I'm kidding with you but yeah you're right no, he's absolutely running away and he serves you as he's supposed to be serving the community and you're right uh blocking someone who's pointing out that he is so clearly bought by scientology he should yeah. be able to engage in a in a civil a conversation about it and should be able to answer questions uh, to those who put him there. Yeah, exactly. So I, I reported this to Mid Sussex District Council, which, you know, you can make a complaint online and express your views at how this is not OK and it's a breach of a code of conduct. You know, I've done that waiting to hear back. I suppose it will take some time. But other than that, at the moment, I think it's just, you know, be vocal use your voice there are so many people who are currently in scientology or at least affected by scientology who have been silenced because scientology takes away your voice mm -hmm. it takes away your ability to speak up so if you are in a position to even just send out a tweet or you know post on facebook whatever it may be just saying hey i don't agree with this you are speaking on the behalf of many people who can't do that right now. So that's what I would say is the number one most effective thing you can do is use your voice and publicly say, hey, I'm not OK with this. I stand with the victims and survivors, not, you know, the dignitaries who are being paid off by a human trafficking, what I believe to be criminal cult. With that, Perfect. Alex. Check out his website, which is, Mike, don't say it because you keep getting it wrong, Alex. Scientologybusiness.com. And I'm Apostate Alex on YouTube as well, if you guys want to see more of this sort and of Twitter, stuff. And on Twitter. And on Twitter, yeah, Apostate Alex. Got you. Got it. Is that right? Got it. Got it, mate. Yeah. <laughs> mate. Got it. Thank you. All right. Guys. Thank you so much. Continue. Amazing. Really Th it. Thank you, Alex. And thank you for everybody who has watched and listened. Uh, we'll be back again next week. Thank who knows what we'll be talking about next week. Love you, Love you all. Bye. Thank you for tuning in. You can find more episodes of Exposing Scientology, both on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to check out my best-selling memoir, a Billion Years, My Escape from a Life in the Highest Ranks of Scientology. 
It's available on Amazon and as an audiobook. Until next time, be well and happy.